Now we come to the hardest part of the program. This is what you call an invitation. This part of the program has nothing to do with anything commercial. When I finish preaching, I don't tell my people now, send me in a postcard or send me in $5 or $10. I finish preaching and preaching what God told me to preach like I've preached to you. I don't say support this ministry or so forth and so on. As a matter of fact, I have nothing to do with this ministry, really. We've got a bunch of folks out in Texas that put these telecasts on, and they bear all the financial burden. How they bear it, I don't even know. I think they have us on about 50 stations. How they do it, I have no idea. It's a miracle. But you'd have to deal with those people if you're going to talk about help for this program. I'm talking now about the help I want from you, and it's got nothing to do with help on this program. It has to do with you getting saved. I just preached a message to you on salvation and what will happen to you if you don't get saved. And when I finish preaching and drawing, I expect you to do something about it if you're going to do right. And I'm asking you to do right by me and by God and by yourself. Nobody wants you in hell. Your worst enemy wouldn't want to see you burn forever. That's one reason men don't believe in hell. They say, well, I wouldn't want to see a fellow burn forever, so I'm sure God is better than I am, so he wouldn't. See how they figure? They forget that God is holy. The Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. For if the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts, saith the Lord. You know what this book says? And it's clear. It says, He that often being reproved hard in his neck should be suddenly cut off, and that without remedy. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. That book says, Behold, today is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. You have right now to get saved. You're not guaranteed 15 minutes beyond when this thing goes off the air. You've got it right now. That's all you got. My desire is to see you saved. That's what I'm after. I'd rather have you accept Jesus Christ and do anything I can think of. No pitch, see? No pipes for pitch man, no gaff to act, you understand? Straight, straight deal, square deal, neighbor. If I could have out of you whatever I wanted out of you right now, man or woman, boy or girl, black or white, I would want you to kneel by that set and accept God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your own personal Savior from your own personal sins. And I can't think of one thing I desire beyond that. Square account. Nobody's pulling your leg. I've got more sense than my preacher brethren. I'm after the big game. I'm not after just the, just the shekels. That stuff will burn. Someday, bless your heart, every church in this country will burn down. Every school in this country will burn down. The government buildings will burn down. Your house, your car will burn up. The trees and the forest, the ecologists are trying to keep growing are going to burn up. It's going to turn to fire. But a soul will live forever someplace, and I wouldn't want you burning. I'd want you happy with God and Jesus Christ. That's why I preach to you. Now, you heard an evangelistic message. I am not an evangelist. I am a Baptist pastor. This pulpit is the pulpit of the Bible Baptist Church in Pensacola, Florida. We've got a small Baptist church here with about 500 members, about 400 active members. We've got a small school down here for training young men for the ministry. And this is a local Baptist church you step into right now when you turn your television set. We're not out to build any kind of a ministry or anything. We're out to get people saved. We've got 32 young men from this church overseas right now preaching the gospel. 32 of them. we got 73 more young men that came through here and studied that are pastoring churches. We're out after souls. I'm out to get you. If you don't like it, flip the switch and get rid of me. But if you let me hang around, I'll be after your soul. I'm out to get it. I'm out to get it for Jesus Christ. He's the only one worthy to have it. It belongs to him. He created it. He died for it. 
and it's his. Have you ever given it to him? Are you keeping it for yourself? Are you a thief? Are you guilty of grand larceny? You want to say, people I'm talking to, I've talked to you. You heard the message. You saw the message. Some even enjoyed it, didn't you? Did you apply it personally? You said, Brother Ruckman, I'm already saved. Oh, I thought I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to the unsaved man, a woman, boy, or girl. Listen to me right now. That's who I'm talking to. What have you done with Jesus, which is called Christ? You've got to do something with him. What have you done with him? Have you ignored him? Have you slighted him? Have you cussed him? A lot of people use the name as a cuss word. Have you accepted him? Have you trusted him? Have you believed on him? If you haven't, will you do so now? In the closing minutes of this telecast, I want you to accept Christ your Savior. I'm asking you to do it. I can't make you do it. Nobody can really ram it down your throat. Nobody's going to try. But I wish you would. That's my earnest desire. That's my heart's desire. I have no desire for you beyond that if you're an unsaved man or woman. And it's so simple. It's so simple. Preachers make it so complicated. Quoting Acts 2.38 and running around talking about initial evidence, the baptism, all this nonsense, this commercialized gas. It's so simple. Friend, let me tell you something. If the Lord Jesus Christ loved you enough to die for you and shed blood for you, do you think he'd make it hard for you to get saved? Let's try that again. If the Lord Jesus Christ loved you enough to die for you and shed his blood for you, do you think he'd make it hard for you to get saved? Why, that's preposterous. The fellow stood up in this pulpit and quoted the scripture from there to there to prove that you had to do this to get saved and that to get saved, this to get saved. It wouldn't amount to a hill of beans. Every verse would be taken out of context. The truth is Christ died for sinners. The truth is Christ came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. The truth is this is a faithful saying with all acceptation that Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He'll save you right now. Just like that. You understand? Just like that. You say, how do we do it? Call on his name. Ask him for salvation. Get on your knees. Come to him the best way you know how. Christ said, him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. That means under no condition. When you come to Christ, the no condition is there. With feeling, without feeling. With a good life, with a bad life. Slow or fast. Him that cometh to me, Christ said, I will in no wise cast out. You come to him today and trust him today and he'll take you. Can I make it any plainer? You take him, he'll take you. Do it. As they say out in the world, do it. Receive him today as your Savior.